what's up everyone back at it again it is dw darkwing dad bringing you a part one of three of my latest build this guy you know star lord man legendary outlaw star lord here uh this is my latest build for uh the upcoming con event Unfortunately, the Punisher War Machine suit, uh, I've just been so busy with just life in general. This year I have a little bit more time, so I'm whipping this helmet together. Of course, still last minute. Uh, it's about 20 days away. Real nice print. This part one here is more or less just my print settings, the configuration of how I put everything on the build plate. Also, some other things that I'm printing. You might see some of the blaster pieces that are right here. Uh, his Sony Walkman, so I'm going to show you guys a couple of those. So what we're going to do here is switch views. I'm going to show you all my settings on Cura. But before we get into settings, I just want to note that I did some very specific calibration and setup tests, both on my machine and with the filament. So of course on my machine, I use primarily my Ender 5 Plus for the face and my Creality CR10 V2 for the back. On both machines, I did have my E-Steps and my Flow Rate both calibrated. On both machines, I have silicone bed mounts, I have upgraded extruder arms, and I do have upgraded cooling fans. Not that you need to do those upgrades, I just wanna note those as part of the machine. Also on the filament, I did a temp tower test, I also did a retraction test, and also very importantly, the whole time these were printing, the filament did stay in a filament dehydrator, and you might have seen that tip in some of my past videos. So now that we've kind of gone over the machines and some of the settings and some of the upgrades that I might have done, let's get into checking out the settings I did in Kira to get this mask looking as good as it did. Come check it out. Before the settings, I just want to talk about the filament that I used for this build. For this helmet, I used Overture Echo PLA. It's actually a recycled PLA. It's from fragments and pieces of old PLA. They recycle it and make a new spool out of it. It does need a little bit of calibration and tuning, but when you get it all fine-tuned, it actually prints really, really smooth. So my temp tower of this showed the best results between 195 and 200. I actually printed it at 198, but everything all came out really good when it was all printed. All right, so this is the position that I went with in printing the Star-Lord mask. This is the Do 3D model. Um, all of the extra little breathers um, on the sides. Uh, there's some pipes and some tubes and some other things that you have to print extra. So those I, I did all extra here. So I do like this particular model just because all these pieces are extra. So you can print those at a very, very fine layer height and get those nice and crisp. But as far as the helmet goes, this was really the best option now there were some trials and tribulations in printing it this way and the biggest issue was this little area right here this sharp angle uh, i went in and i put custom supports on here i'm going to show you what happened but it didn't matter if i printed it this way or i flipped it upside down because both sides have these uh these sharp triangular pieces which if you've ever tried to try to print something on a sharp edge like that it it's usually not a great outcome I flipped it upside down and it created supports for all it just cre it made the print way longer so i went with it this way overall the helmet did come out great uh so i want to kind of go through my settings a lot of it is calibrating the machine and calibrating the film and i can't stress that enough there are some essential settings in here that i will show you that i truly do feel help my prints look as good as they do a lot of it is putting that time into calibrating your filament and and machine so definitely go ahead and do that this was printed at a 0.28 layer height so it wasn't printed at anything you know super super fine i did a couple test prints it looked really good at 0.28 so i just kind of roll with it uh and i'm really glad because i had tried you know even 0.2 and it was like pushing over three days which was crazy so this was scaled at 100 four percent so it was a little bit larger i did use armor smith to get it fitted and everything so a 0.28 layer height um i didn't really adjust any of the line widths or anything like that it really isn't completely necessary going down to walls a 1.2 thickness with a wall line count of three very important always click the optimized wall printing order that will print the walls in the most efficient way to get the best quality you can go in and manually you know print uh, inner walls before outer and and vice versa changes from model to model so selecting this option here uh basically when you slice it it is going to in a sense kind of scan the model and see what the best way to print it is in which order so always click that optimize wall printing order uh that'll basically print it the most efficient way top and bottom thickness so i like to do mine a little bit finer i did this at a 0.8 don't be afraid to go down to a 0.6. When you get into printing at, you know, one and 1.4 and things like that, 
understand uh, it's gonna come out a little bit thicker. It really just creates more post-processing. So very important when you are running that thinner top and bottom thickness, uh, you wanna compensate that by doing a higher number of top layers and bottom layers. So, you know, if you're running a 0.6, I recommend doing five and five. If you're running a 0.8, uh, you know, you can do four and four. Uh, if you're doing something with a dome or you just want a little bit more support or a little bit more density to the model, don't be afraid to add that fifth top layer as well. You don't wanna get into putting so many top layers on that you're just wasting time in filament. I've personally found, and it kind of coincides with your infill for helmets of an infill around 12%, 0.8 with five top layers is, is, is very thick. I was really happy with the density of this helmet. Um, the 0.8 with the five top layers and four bottom layers. And you can add five bottom layers if you want. It's just the top that I'm, I'm primarily worried about. It, it doesn't really matter that you have more top layers. It's kind of like putting an extra coat of clear coat on is really what it is. Want a good foundation, but you always want a good, a good amount of top layers too. So that's why I do that. It comes out a little bit finer. Uh, there's less sanding that you have to do. I don't want to say it's quicker. It in all reality is a little bit slower because you're, you're adding more passes with the hot end and adding more top layers. But for me, that little bit of time that you put in to adding more top layers at a finer thickness, it does save you a lot on sanding. So uh, you can see here that I did uh, enable ironing, have uh, what is called a ironing flow. It comes default at 10. I did do some test prints and I noticed that I was getting some minor over extrusion. So I turned this down to nine and it actually eliminated it. Never be afraid of doing little test prints. And you know, you, I'm not talking about just like cubes and things like that. Um, benchies are really great. I know that's like the universal thing, but you can find so much from a benchie. So when I printed that little benchie, I noticed just minor blips here and there when I did ironing. And I turned this down to nine and it almost completely eliminated it. So again, print that benchy you should always do that uh, found out by turning down the ironing flow just one percent did help eliminate that quite a bit the infill i did that at 12 percent. that was perfectly fine you know guys you don't need helmets printed at 20 and 25 percent you have uh the right amount of top layers um, a good pattern. Uh, I always use lines. Um, it never leaches through. Um, again, that has to do a little bit with that infill overlap percentage. I also have this turned down, but I never see any patterning or anything in my print. Turn that infill overlap percentage down just a little bit from default. I believe this comes at 15. I turn it down almost halfway. I never have any infill patterns on my silks, on my regular PLA. I just like lines because it does save a little bit on print time. If you want something that's better for structure, um, go for gyroid. Um, that's it's definitely going to be one of the most strongest. My print speed, I did uh, everything at 55 millimeters per second. I do like to bump down uh, my infill speed and my inner wall speed to 50 um, just because it is that uh, kind of curved pattern here. So I do like to turn that down just a little bit, especially since there were so many supports and everything on the inside. I also turned down my support speed just to make sure nothing was breaking off and I had to bust out the hot glue gun. My travel speed is turned down as well. I believe default this is 135 or 140. Again, you don't want something traveling super quick and then moving. So I do like to have more of a gentle uh, travel speed. That also goes along with your jerk and acceleration, which I'll touch on for a second. You can see here that I have both my acceleration and jerk control enabled. Uh, as far as those settings go, uh, from default with the new version of Kira, it's actually nice. Jerk actually comes at 10 millimeters per second, but I still uh, turn it down to eight. Same thing with acceleration. I turned mine down to 275. Default, it comes at 300. I know the older version of Kira, print acceleration was at 500 or 600. And I believe the jerk setting was like 20 millimeters per second. So it's nice that they tune these down. So if you've used an old version of Kira, and upgraded to the new one and wondering why the print speed is so much longer, that's one of the factors there. But again, just like with your travel speed being low, you don't want your hot end when it's printing something to come through and whip over and then stop real abruptly. You want a nice smooth transition, you know, f you know, from, from layer to layer. So you don't want something super quick. Uh, again, you don't want it all over the place really fast. Turning down that jerk and acceleration, I know I've touched on it before, very, very important. Also, if you're not using things like silicone bed mounts, um, it'll save you from having to re-level your bed all the time. Understand all that quick moving of the Y axis. Uh, not so much on the Ender 5 because that just goes up and down. But if you have a traditional 3D printer where the bed is moving forward and back, all that quick 
acceleration, that stopping and starting, uh, the springs are going to move and they're going to, you know, it's, it's going to unlevel the bed. Uh, so moving on to retraction of this model, looked best with the retraction test of six millimeter distance at 35 millimeters per second. Again, my combing mode, if you have watched any of my silk printing videos, you know that I prefer not in skin. And basically what that does is uh, when you do combing, uh, instead of moving, say, from here to here, what it will do is it will travel back over the filament on the inner walls and kind of smooth it out or comb it out in a sense. So when you do combing, not in skin and ironing, understand that it's really going to smooth the print out really nice. And that's one of the reasons why this helmet looks so good. So it does take longer. Um, understand that normally what it would do is it would do a layer here and then retract and hop over here and do it again. Instead, what it does is it does that movement and then comes back over here and it's combing and smoothing all that out, avoiding the outer walls, which is very important. Um, that way you don't get any blips or any over extrusion or anything like that. It's all in the inner wall. So again, everything kind of falls in together. When you click that optimized wall printing order, uh, essentially it does the outer walls first. And combing and ironing does help smooth everything out and uh, really make for a fine print. I do have avoid printed parts when traveling and also avoid supports, which is very important. Again, it does make the print go a little bit longer, but the last thing you want is the hot end to clip one of the walls, cause a layer shift or blow out a support, and then you gotta bust out the glue stick and try to fix it. Nothing crazy on cooling, guys. Uh, like I said, I have upgraded fans on my machine, so uh, even if you're running stock fans, I really don't mess with with fans too much. But temp tower is very important. If you don't do a temp tower and you're extruding your filament way too hot, and it's not cooling it fast enough, you're gonna have a sloppy print. So I can't stress enough, guys, things like temp towers, retraction test, all those things are so, so important. As far as supports go, uh, obviously we needed some supports on the inside of the, uh, the helmet here. You can see all the red areas where it did create some supports. Everything printed really good. I did a 67% overhang. Uh, I love using zigzag. It's pretty much the best option you can do. My density, uh, I really only use 4%. You don't need super thick supports. And again, you can do test prints. I'll run anywhere from 4 to 7% and that's all I need. Very important, the support line distance. This is basically the distance from the model and your support. From default, it does come very high. Again, I think around uh, somewhere around 10 millimeters. I found that to be a little bit far when I was rolling with those stock settings. Uh, a couple models here and there, I had some minor spaghetti factories on the inside. It was a little bit too far and it never grabbed onto the model. So I actually shortened that distance to five millimeters. I've had really great luck with that. Don't be afraid to mess with that line distance if you are having some issues with supports and actually supporting the model. I don't really mess with the support, um, the enabling of uh, the support interface, the roof and the floor. Uh, the Basically what this does is this prints a very uh, thin skin on the model so say you have a support right here it prints a skin and then the support attaches to that what i found happens sometimes is that just it it sticks to it so much and it actually can be harder to get off and it actually creates more work for you in some instances on some of my silk prints it actually ripped part of the print off uh, and there is a uh, same thing, there is a, a distance that you can change that on. And I tried a couple different settings and it just didn't work. I found that cutting that distance of uh, the line distance in half from 10 to five, you don't even need to mess with these. So I kind of avoid using those. Go ahead and mess with them if you like. Overall, there was no need to use those on this particular model. As far as the adhesion goes, I think you guys know I'm a hairspray and glass kind of guy. So a uh, little bit of hairspray on the uh, glass bed there. I use brim, uh, pretty much stock settings here, eight millimeter width, uh, 20 line count and brim on the outside only. And overall the helmet printed uh, really great. Like I said, it actually got done in about two days. Uh, pretty good job of uh, efficiently printing it there. Um, the back, I'm not really gonna go crazy here. Um, it was the same settings. I didn't do anything different. It was the same overhang angle a little bit of a roll of the dice um, on that I wasn't sure if it was gonna print but luckily I had my supports good and everything uh, but overall uh, it came out really good so uh, that's pretty much it for settings guys on this uh, what I'll do is kind of show you the model let you know my plans and kind of wrap this thing up all right well that's pretty much it for the settings so hopefully uh, those explanations there kind of gave you some insight and some tips on how to get your prints looking something like this and I think for a 0.28 layer height it did come out pretty smooth pretty slick uh, like I said taking that time to calibrate your machine 
your filament and things like that, they, re they really do pay dividends. But what I wanna do now is just show you the only hiccup I had in the print, and it was a real minor fix. It wasn't anything crazy. So on this, this is this is the, the, the way the front piece is. So understand that it's got these really sharp corners here. And whenever you print something on that, that's a lot of weight. It doesn't matter if you're printing it this way or this way. That's a lot of weight and a lot of stress. I tried putting custom supports on here and it still didn't help. So if you could see this, like from like right here, it just broke off. So I had to PLA weld this. I think I did a pretty good job too. You can barely tell. Once I sand that down and, and fill it, it, you won't even notice it. What I had to do is I got some glue sticks and I was able to kind of re or you know resupport it so it continued printing but these did break off but like i said it's not going to take much to fix these so that's probably the most sanding <laughs> i'm going to have to do on this it didn't matter if i tipped it upside down here the same thing let me get the duct tape by the way the same thing could have happened with this tip here really it, it wouldn't have mattered so that's really the only i guess you could say downside to to this particular helmet if this was attached i think you could just flip it upside down because this is all nice and smooth However, it's not. I like having the extra back piece because what I'm gonna do is put some elastic and some magnets on there. That way I can just kind of take it off and then it just kind of clicks on. That'll be in the video. I'll show you guys how to do that. There'll be a quick little how-to on there. But overall, the mask fits me um, you know, really well. I have to go on the top here. Um, it fits pretty good. Um, I'm gonna have the eyes and everything on there. So uh, I'm gonna be knocking this out real quick. I'm gonna have part two, my whole post-processing on this. I really just wanted to show you guys some of my settings, the way I had it placed on the build plate, just to try to help you guys out. Um, it was a lot of trial and error getting my prints you know, to look like this. This is now my second year of 3D printing, so understand it is gonna take some time, guys. I have patience, it will come. Uh, hopefully channels like myself, and there's a lot of others out there will help you. Take the time to watch the videos, uh, learn and grow, and before you know it, you'll be pumping out stuff that looks better than mine. As far as the rest of the, I guess, attire that I'm making, I do have the blaster. I've got all kinds of pieces over here. I started printing one. Uh, again, this is a do 3D file. Um, this will be more in the post processing. I do some airbrushing, do some weathering on that. So that'll be a cool addition to the video. Uh, also to go along with the helmet, these are all the little pipes and everything that go on there. So I'll have to just very finely sand these down and then pop everything on the helmet. So really glad to be doing this. You know, Star-Lord is pretty much my favorite character. Um, so really happy to, to make this helmet. I'm gonna kind of make it my own. It may not be 100% cinematic, but it's definitely gonna have that DW touch. And then the last piece of the puzzle, of course, is Star-Lord's Walkman. A uh, real cool file piece. I'll touch on this a little bit more uh, in my part two. It's actually a Hex 3D file. Uh, really glad I found this. Really awesome file, though. It's got, like, everything. It's got all the all the numbers, and then you add all the buttons and everything on here. So I'm actually pretty, pretty pumped to be doing this. Uh, so this will be really cool. It's going to be nice and weathered and beat up. I've got my whole Star-Lord attire, which I will debut when I go to Pensacon 2022 in about three weeks here. Hopefully you guys come along for the ride and check me out as my new updated version of Star-Lord. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Those are my settings. Like I said, settings are important, but calibrating your machine and calibrating your filament is even more important. So definitely always make sure you're doing those retraction tests, those temp towers, uh, E-steps very important, flow rate very important, using that filament dehydrator box like you've seen in all my videos, very, very important. You invest that time and that money into your machine and into your printing, your prints are gonna look absolutely great. Let me know what you think of the video, guys. If you enjoy the video, give me one of those big thumbs up. If you have a comment or a question on anything I covered in the video, go ahead and leave me a comment. You know I'll reply back. If you're on the Discord, uh, feel free to shoot me a message or leave me a comment on any of the pages on there. If you're not on the Discord, go ahead and check that link in the description box. Join a fun 3D printing family of the DW crew. And if you do like all things 3D printing, cosplay, Marvel, all the stuff that we do here, definitely click that subscribe button. But that's it for the video, guys. Like I said, I appreciate all of you guys watching the video. Thank you, thank you, thank you to each and one of my subscribers and my viewers. If you like the content you're seeing, like I said, give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, click that subscribe button. More stuff is around the corner. But for now, I gotta kick it into high gear. I gotta start post-processing this helmet so I can get you guys part two in a timely manner and it can be done for Pensacon. That's it, guys. I'm out. Time to go sanding. Give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, click that subscribe button. Until next time, Star-Lord out. Later. Later.